All right, so let's take a closer look at the Mars 3 here. What's interesting is there's no wording of anywhere that I see that says Mars. So we do have a reasonably sized screen here, not large at all, but not tiny either. Our USB port, and it is on the front, so that's nice to see. And here we have a power button to turn the printer on and off. So turning it on the side, you can see we just have some vents here. Same thing on the other side, just venting. And on the back, we got the power input port and some of the specs of the printer, which says Mars 3, the machine size in millimeters, the input voltage and the weight, which is 5.2 kilograms, is around 11, 12 pounds. So even though our base here is plastic, as we go up, we start to see metal. So this part here is all metal. Our main Z axis frame piece is also all metal, but at the very top, we do have a plastic cover and that's just for looks. So on the front top here, we have the tub, which secures by these two little bolts and they do completely come out. So the tub itself is made out of metal, feels like aluminum. We got the FEP film inside. On the back side, you guys can see that you can release these bolts and change out the film. And also there is a protector that we need to remove before we put it back in. And also a nice little detail, if you guys can see maybe there's little tiny feet on the four corners and that's these four bolts here. And that makes it nice because you can set it down without the film touching the bottom of the table. So yeah, I like to see attention to detail like that. So here we can see the main screen, 6.6 .6 inch. So yeah, this is probably one of the main features of this printer that it is a 4K monochrome LCD. So yeah, not only are we getting really fast printing, but we're also getting long life. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what our print quality is gonna look like. Go ahead and take this protector off. So the Z axis runs on a linear rail. You guys can see that with our lead screw here. And this frame arm here is all metal. Very nice and heavy duty feeling. So yeah, they definitely didn't cheap out on anything important here. So we get really high quality all metal parts in all of the functioning areas. So let's move this out of the way for now. And we'll take a closer look of what's inside this toolkit. And there's quite a few things in here, guys. So right on top, we have some tools, Allen wrenches, and looks like some extra bolts if you ever need some. You get a plastic spatula, which is great to scrape off the film if you needed to. We do get some nice quality cutters, and this is good for processing your models and cutting off the supports off of it. We get some strain filters, quite a few of them. So you need filters to pour back your unused resin back in the bottle. We get a couple masks, which is nice. We also get a normal spatula, and this one here you'll use to scrape your models off of the build plate. And then we got some gloves, and you definitely want to wear this when you're handling resin. We got our power supply which is the brick. This end here will plug into the machine. And on the other end, we got the US type grounded plug that you'll plug in the wall. And the power adapter is a 24 volt, three amps, which is 72 watts. We also get a thumb drive. And there's usually things in there like a test model, PDF files, and also a slicer program. And for the last part, which is kind of interesting because we get a little Cheetu box card that looks like includes the pro version of G2 box for a whole year with this printer. All right, so let's go ahead, plug it in here in the back. And there is a power button here. And by the way, guys, this thing really moves around easy. So I guess that's maybe a plus, maybe not so plus, I don't know. I guess it depends what you're sitting on, but for a resin printer, I guess it's fine that it moves around. It's easier to kind of manage it. But yeah, let's go ahead and hit this power button, see what happens. So it was silent in the beginning and now it turned on the fans. Not sure why, but it does idle with the fans on. So interesting looking at display menu there. Looks very simple. Let's go ahead and look through it. So we have tools, system, and print. Let's click on tools. So we got manual adjustment, exposure set to zero, stop, tank clean, and back. So the font is really small, kind of hard to see what's what but the buttons themselves are decent size. So let's go back for a second. Here we have system about the printer and you can turn on the sound here on and off and it comes with it off. Touch screen calibration, we don't need to do that. Service, how to contact the company. A language, so we have quite a few to choose from. Very nice to see, we're gonna choose English. And that's it here. Then we have the print button, which nothing's there because we haven't plugged in anything in the USB port. All right, so let's go to tools. On manual here, we can move the Z axis up and down. So you can do that here. Now, one thing we can do is test the exposure on the LCD, see if it works. So we'll click on that. It's gonna ask us for how long. 15 seconds should be good. We'll click on next. And it does project this image here on top. And you guys can see what it looks like there. So that shows us that our UV lights are working and our LCD screen is working. 
And so there are 36 UV cob lights inside, which is a new feature, I guess, and also a new copper heat sink to cool them off. And that should greatly improve the life of this printer overall. And so Elegu says that even after 6,000 hours of exposure printing, the light output only degrades about 5%. So yeah, this printer is definitely designed for the long haul. All right, so let's go back here. And here we have set to zero. So if you need to reset your Z axis, you could do that here. We got stop, tank clean. So tank clean basically just exposes the whole screen. So the LCD lets all the light go through and you guys can see what that looks like here. It's completely wide open. You can maybe see the light pattern inside how it comes in. They do say it's very uniform in the Mars 3. So you would use the tank clean whenever you have a little bit of resin left in here. And instead of trying to wash it out, you could use this feature here to solidify the rest of it, whatever's left inside, and then peel it off. So, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. And what's interesting is I don't see any bed leveling. So I'm guessing maybe that it's here and maybe what this is what that means. All right, so according to the manual, that button is supposed to be home. All right, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the home button. So let's go ahead and click on 10 millimeters and run the Z axis up a bit and we'll grab our build plate remove this protector and go ahead and install it on the arm here and so the way to level this platform is there's two bolts here that we're gonna have to loosen we'll grab the Allen wrench Okay, so now you guys can see our build plate just moves around in any direction and what's interesting is also up and down there's a spring in there so now we need some kind of sheet of paper. I'm just going to use the manual, just one sheet here, one page. But yeah, I'm just going to click home now and the platform should go down to where it's supposed to be. So sure enough, there it goes. All right. Okay, so it's settling down. So it did compress on the spring just a little bit. We should be good right there. So the spring is actually pushing the whole plate down. So all we got to do is grab our wrench, maybe put a little bit of pressure with like two fingers like this. Not too much because you don't want to push too hard on the LCD screen. Just a little bit and make sure that it's nice and flat. And also make sure your orientation is good side to side because it does move everywhere. So okay, mine looks pretty good right there. So I'm just going to tighten it right here. All right. And you don't have to go crazy on this just you know snug and that should be good let's go back up and now we should have a, a leveled platform so let's go ahead and home it again to make sure everything's good and just by eyeballing it it looks pretty much perfect now it's very possible that this might be too close to the screen because we still have the vat with the film so for some printers you know this works fine for others you might want to you know use a little thicker paper maybe use two or three sheets of paper if you're you know getting like an elephant foot on the bottom or it's sticking way too good or way too well you know you can re-level it by adding more paper underneath I think we'll just leave it the way it is and we'll adjust it later if we have to so I'm gonna bring it back up and we can go ahead and remove the protector off of the vat. So yeah, now we're just going to set this back in here. And it falls in nicely and clamp it down. 